Hello everyone, and welcome back to the jungles of the Fruitless Tribe, where little Coco is watching on from the heart of the jungle as her sister, uh, well, also Clem is also her sister, but I was supposed to dramatically say as her sister Persimmon, who she is bonded to, so that the two can bring rise to the Fruitless line back to this jungle, must face her first battle. So, welcome back everyone. We are picking up right where we left off with the bones of Kumquat and of Coconut now resting at the heart of the jungle with a aggressive Berina. He is no another betrayal Berina, a friendly Berina that we were not able to get rid of in time and so he has grown up to be aggressive. We were kind of attacking him his entire childhood so I could understand the motive, but he is still an invader upon the island and the child of the other invader that Squashy fell for because he had those long ram antlers has been born and she doesn't even have the antlers. She, she unfortunately can only do a teeny bit of collecting. The only thing she really has going for her in the eyes of the Fruitless tribe is that toxic body nichelings are considered extremely attractive since they have the colors of the jungle. <sighs> But I, I feel bad for Squashy, her first child, and, and she's just got so much disappointment, not in the child whatsoever. I think she loves her child, and she will do her best to see that Mulberry will have a good place. Maybe, if not one of the, the fruit plants, then at least a berry bush of her very own to tend to. But I think she just feels disappointed. She was she was betrayed by her first love. And hopefully she will have another love in the future. And actually that might be Star. I wonder if Star actually knows what happened. And although he is agitated because he has spent a good chunk of his life chasing down the invader that we have wandering around. What is his name? Little Mulberry? Little Mulberry, do please tell me. And Mulberry, you are actually a descendant of Kumquat, so even though you are the child of a invader, uh, in this case, Karnu here, who he is not part of our tribe, he is just a, a invader to the island, who has broken Squashy's heart, because you are the grandchild of Kumquat, uh, you actually get to have one bat wing, my dear. So you may yet have your line woven back into the bat line. All right, I kind of, I almost wanted to be like the Batmobile, but sorry, I really love Batman. It's one of, okay, I won't go on. I really, but Batman Beyond was one of my favorite things growing up. Okay, I get out of my system. Too many bats in the attic. All right, <clears throat> moving on. So I wonder if Star actually did notice what happened with Squashy. And instead of being upset, instead of perhaps looking down on her for having romanced with one of the invaders, he, he would see the invader as a betrayer in so many ways. And he wouldn't look down on Squashy for, for perhaps being overwhelmed and, and then betrayed by the invader. So I wonder if they might actually end up uh, in a romance because A and F and B and D immunity with a lot of really nice bat traits and scorpion tail. I think we have found a family. That makes me very happy. All right, well that's happening. Kiwi is working his way over. Hopefully he will see Clem doing battle. They will fall in love and have many wonderful healthy bats. And I must keep my eyes open for Coco. I think Coco is going to know within her instincts, within the kind of almost priestess-like impulses that she has, that she must seek out someone else who has albinism and smells semi-decent. That would be a perk. Uh, is there anybody else who has like albinism in this tribe? Let's see, because we want that trait, but it's very funly one of the few that you cannot actually put into the mutation menu. And right now, coconut any and radish and persimmon and kiwi. So radish is the only male with albinism. And he only smells half good. He shares an F immunity with Coco. So we'll keep our eyes open. But radish might have to be chosen by basically the priestess to bear his child. Uh, to bear her child. Uh, well, to give her a child, I should say. In order to try to get that albinism in. Because I think albinism is going to be the key, really. The key to victory. All right, that's everybody. Let's do this. Oh my gosh, 
Persimmon! Oh, but Persimmon fought back! She may not be very strong physically, but thanks to her toxic body, the Barina has been poisoned! Yes, we can do this! Alright, come on, Ginger. Oh, victory! Wonderful! Alright, let's go ahead. We're going to, to let Clem... We'll have her pick up the food. That's fantastic. Who had a baby? <gasps> Pom! Oh. My. Gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is- Oh my gosh. This is one of the coolest babies we have ever had. Jikama? I need to rename her to like- We already have a ginger. What do I call you? What? You guys look at this little one. She's full of stripes. Tiger fruit? I'm gonna name her Tiger Fruit. I have to. She's just so cool. Look at her little stripes all over her body. And she has one bat wing and a claw. <gasps> she represents, I think, a good match. We are finding a love all over this island today, amazingly. But she represents a good match between Palme and Wakame. This is perfect. I, I can't believe little tiger. Well, I kind of want to name her like uh, Tig May now. Tig May? She does kind of remind me of like a little tigger. You know, like a uh, bouncy, bouncy, trouncy tigger. Oh, I haven't seen, sung that song in ages. How many of you guys even know that anymore? Aww. Uh, I, I, you know what? I'm going to name her. I'm going to name her uh, Taga May. T Ga May. Tigame. Just because that seems like a great name. Tigame. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, and maybe Wakame kind of adds a little bit of his family's and history's influence in helping to pick that name. But I think that Palme, with 14 days left, is just in awe. She loves this child. She loves Rosanna Anna as well. But the way Wakame has stayed by her side, I think they're really falling in love so much. We're gonna let Wakame eat so that he has a long, long life ahead of him. And I think that overjoyed with the birth of her new child and realizing that she thinks she has found true love, Pome will approach Wakame once again. And, well, I think Wakame will be a little concerned. He's like, but we have so many that we need to take care of right now. Perhaps now is not the time for yet another child. Little Rosanna Anna still needs trained and to find a place to gather food. I think Pome will be swept up in the romance just once more, though, and convince him that everything will be all right. And meanwhile, little Rosanna Anna now has a sister to play with. How exciting. What are her recessives? Oh, she has terrible fertility. This child will- it'll be a miracle if she ever has a child. However, she has bat head and toxic body and scorpion tail recessive. I'm so happy to see the scorpion tail in there because it reminds me of Banana Nay. Alright, meanwhile, Ginger needs to heal up. Um, and where's the nearest healing fruit? Hmm. All the way over there? I think it's over here, actually. So I think Ginger is going to be a little exhausted. Uh, but he is going to... Yeah, 16 days left. A and D immunity. He's got some good traits to possibly pass on. B and D. K and F. He might be a good mate for Persimmon in the future, actually. Because he's a little bit aggressive, and I, I think that that could be appreciated. Um... Is there a healing fruit down here? No, that's a bush. I think I'm going to let him start jumping this way. Gliding, I should say, as he is a one-winged bat. So he glides places. He's not a forest walker. Uh, unfortunately, Clem is a forest walker. But I think she's going to start coming over here because she's searching for another fruit tree of her own because she's really good at collecting. And she's going to try to follow her bat nose. And it's beginning to lead her this way right where she is going to bump into kiwi we're gonna see if we can get them to settle down over here that would be delightful and then over here squashy i think who's really in love with her daughter and star star is going to help protect these areas so star is providing some food squashy is providing some food and i think that they're just quietly watching each other 
and Persimmon is going to start moving past them. I think we're going to send her down to this tree, uh, maybe to start gathering from this tree. And I think her sister will visit as soon as Coco is old enough to fly. The whole tribe is going to be in awe when she starts setting out across the jungle. That's going to be very impressive. Meanwhile, Artichoke is a forest walker. I love his colors so much though, but he is going to help explore the forest as the result of being, you know, said forest walker. And he also is very good at digging up useful roots. Speaking of useful things, Lurzu is going to eat this healing fruit and offer to show Kiwi where there is more healing fruit. Oh, but to watch her step. This is a very dangerous part of the jungle, so they will both kind of clear the way. They have learned to be wary after being attacked by that Barina, after all. All right, Rosanna Anna, Coco. Is that everybody? Yep. All right, Coco. Lead us in to the next day. I think Coco might be content because the tribe is kind of doing well and beginning to find a lot of love matches, which is something very, very special indeed. All right, so let's see. Star is gathering up some food. Persimmon is going to jump down to recover herself. Uh, also, I think her toxic body actually makes her tired in the heat. So having her come down here might give her a little more energy. And then Squashy is going to continue to quietly collect the fruit in her way of trying to return to the tribe's good graces. Nobody seems too upset about Mulberry's presence, but I, I think that when they come by, you know, Squashy can kind of feel, if not the dis like aggression, maybe a tinge of disapproval. And she would find comfort in Star just understanding that she was betrayed by the first love of her life, who is an invader and should have been destroyed anyway. Maybe Star would even feel responsible. <gasps> what if Star feels a little responsible for the heartbreak that she went through, that Squashy went through, because he was trying so hard to get rid of that invader and he just could not manage it. So I wonder if he does feel a little responsible. Also, we have Clem, who unfortunately wasn't able to use her fishing tail to- that would have been so cool to get a Razorina. I think she and Radish are gonna, gonna flirt and just kind of like stand here trying to catch Razorina for a second. There's a lot of love matches suddenly happening on this island. I am so impressed. Huh. Maybe it's the, the lullaby that we had of the rain from the Moon Mother Bat last time? Alright. Meanwhile, speaking of love matches, I think Wakame and Palm, especially with their really cool daughter, uh, Tagame, Tagame, there we go, Tagame, I feel like they're really a good match. Oh, and the healing plant's all healed up. Hey, Ginger, you don't have to go very far, buddy. You can go ahead and pop over here. And we do have to get rid of these terrible termites. I should have waited to heal him until we got rid of the termites. Um... Palm is a scaredy cat, so I don't think she would want to have anything to do with getting rid of the termites. But I think Rosanna Anna is a little curious. So she has jumped up to speak with Uncle Ginger, and he might explain how these are dangers to the jungle, but require the assistance of the colony working together in order to get rid of them. Uh, the colony who can eat insects, at least. Meanwhile, Wakame... Well, actually, I think that that anybody can help get the insects off, but we'll have to test that. <gasps> Another nest! Oh, I think that would be so exciting. I think that Pome would see that as a sign that clearly they should have had more children. Uh, all right. And then Lurzu. This is tricky. This is danger zone. Lurzu is going to continue to come down here with Kiwi. Oh, this is a lot of danger zone. However... Like, if we come up here, that's danger. But we need to destroy the invading plants. So maybe they will work together to try to make that happen. But first, they're trying to feed Kiwi a healing plant, which makes sense. Let's come down here. We'll start clearing this area out. And then over here, Artichoke is going to gather a bit more food. And maybe start helping to clear out and conquer uh, the invasive plants of the jungle. Which apparently include the grass this time. Alright, Coco? Oh, Coco! <gasps> Coco! Oh, it's more lullabies! It's more poetry and lullabies from the moon mother goddess. Just in time for Coco to prove she can fly! Oh, 
Yes, this is so cool. Oh my gosh, Coco. Fly, Coco, fly. This is going to be awesome. We're going to have her fly as like the last thing. That's going to be so cool. Uh, all right, let's go ahead. Persimmon is going to eat of the healing of fruit. And then I think until we have like 50 food or so, until there's a stockpile of food, she will come down and she will stand under this gift tree. I think they would consider these nut trees gift trees. They're, they're not really trees of the jungle, but they're not considered invasive because they don't encroach on the jungle's territory the way the other plants do. And they have been quietly given a tiny vision from Nice through Coco that these trees are, are meant as an offering to help support the moon mother bats uh, colony. So we'll go ahead and get her working on that. Star is going to clear away some more of the grasses and start working his way over to where Squashy is diligently gathering and watching after little baby Mulberry. And they're beginning to eye each other up a little bit. And speaking of eyeing each other up a little bit, I believe that Radish, I think Clem, will ask Radish if uh, she could come... <gasps> Radish just found a nest. I think that that is just gonna make him like if he could blush I think he would blush to the tips of his little bat ears because he is going to believe that uh, Oh gosh, I mean Clem is so beautiful, but but truly would she? Would she consider being my mate and Clem's going to ask hey, so what do you have over there? And I think she's going to see the nest and kind of blush right back at him. Thank goodness. <gasps> There's the invader! He is eating from the sacred fruit! This is this is unacceptable. Unacceptable. I can hardly even see him here. Just as they're beginning to flirt, she might say, Did you hear that? And they're gonna find the invader. Get rid of him. He betrayed his his child. We cannot have him on this island. Alright, meanwhile, over here. Oh, Ginger is going to defend the berry bushes and the jungle by getting quite a bit of food there. Nice! And then we're going to allow Pome to stuff her very hungry pregnant self. Wakame to help out. There's some food down here. Rosanna Anna wants to help out too. Lurzu, this is going to be a little tricky. We're going to have Kiwi eat of the healing plant. Attack this plant because it is an invasive plant. We cannot jump up here or else we will be in owie owie danger zone. And we'll have Lurzu jump over here and start gathering from this beleaguered, poor, poor, stinky fruit tree. A tree of the goddess surrounded by these invasive species, clearly on the verge of dying. We must defend this tree. And I wonder if Clem would actually be willing to uh, help us out with that. I think that Clem, or Coco, excuse me, not Clem. Sorry, there's a lot of nichelings. I believe that Coco will see it as her duty and a sign that she is to help all of the nichelings of the island find what they need. So we are going to have her go around and fly to each of the special trees, clear the area around it, and help to discover more of the healing fruits. And we are going to begin by having Coco well, wait, 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 artichoke, artichoke. Coco's supposed to do the last move, so it's really impressive. All right, where's the next plant that we haven't uncovered? Down there, we're starting to get them all over the place. We have a sneaky fruit tree, or like a, a healing plant down there. We will begin by allowing Coco to fly over here and help to assess the most dire situation on the island. Fly, Coco, ah, she did it! She took flight, oh my gosh! This is so exciting. She is going to use her powers of flight to carefully but thoroughly explore the island and find a way safely but carefully to help all of all of her people know the jungle. Oh, this is going to be so cool. All right, guys. Coco has finally been the first of our fruit leaves to take flight. We are going to make this happen. I am so excited. Holy cow. If you could, do please leave a like for the much amounts of love that we have found here today. I'm so excited. Who's your guys' favorite couple? Because I'm actually really in love with Wakame and Palm, but I love how Star has really kind of 
taken an interesting twist with Squashy's story. And honestly, I love Radish and Clem and think they'll have amazing babies. There's just love all over the island. It's amazing. Uh, and if you guys would like to, do please consider subscribing to become one with our niche link pantheon for this and literally thousands more adventures. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.